Would you ever use a cracked piggy bank, or even worse, an open piggy bank, to hold your savings? Would you trust leaving your money unattended? Would you ever steal money from yourself? You may not believe this, but the answers to those questions are basically yes when we refer them to the government gathering through tax revenue, the funding needed to provide all citizens with public services, such as those that relate to health, education, infrastructure, security, environment, defense, and the like. In order to ensure its efficacy, the government has devised and implemented an intricate and powerful system made by various divisions, politicians, ministries, agencies, committees, advisory panels, etc., together with their thousands of employees. Every year, the state gathers a certain amount of money based on the Documento di Economia e Finanza, DEF, which, translated in English, means Document of Economics and Finance. It sets the macroeconomic and public finance targets, bearing in mind the regional specificities, and it identifies policies aimed at income and employment growth and budget balancing. Unfortunately, the DEF does not always accurately reflect what should be gathered. Its forecasts are not always precise, and its efficacy is invalidated by tax evasion and tax avoidance. Consider this. A recent study compiled by Italy's trade union UIL has estimated that tax evasion costs Italy over 180 billion euros a year, an equivalent of 11.2% of its GDP. UIL has found that 347,000 euros worth of taxes is evaded every minute in the country. As you can see, with this kind of problem, the government's piggy bank is short from the start. Sadly, a portion of the funds collected by the government, that is taxes resulting from honest citizens' sacrifices, ends in a black hole of waste, privilege, inefficiency and corruptions. This is caused not only by tax evasion, but also by fraudulent and criminal behavior on the part of some administrators and politicians. Ironically, the very people in charge to manage the government's money for the benefit of every citizen. Through this corruption, many vital resources are dissipated and, in many cases, money for the public good is used by officials for corrupt purposes. In addition, mafia organizations and Camorra's illegal earnings further add to this economic crisis. As you can imagine, the cracks in the piggy bank lead to poor public services, unfinished public works projects and the inability to implement improvements and reforms to better serve the community at large, such as implementing more efficient bus and train systems, creating safe and equipped schools and improving public offices and hospitals so they are safer, more efficient and more reliable. While the resources, i.e. taxes, are obviously fundamental in realizing new programs and improvements, the piggy bank, that is, getting money in the piggy bank and keeping the money from falling through the cracks, is the key to the solution. Government is often criticized for bad management of public spending, leading citizens to believe that their government does not adequately represent them, and even leading some citizens to avoid paying taxes. That is wrong. We all know that there are fraudsters, scoundrels, and illegal organizations evading taxes or misusing funds, but it does not mean that we should avoid paying our fair share. The key is to make sure that everyone's share is fair, and those in charge of gathering shares are getting and keeping the shares, i.e. the money, in the piggy bank. Ironically, in many cases, our own actions and daily behaviors lead to the very problems about which we complain. These actions significantly weigh on the waste and the mismanagement of public spending. We are asking, in some cases, for the government to seal cracks that we ourselves created. Here are some examples. If you don't pay the bus ticket, you cannot complain if the bus is unclean or not running on time. If you don't ask for your receipt when making a purchase, you may become an accomplice of the merchant who is evading taxes and fees. If you litter or vandalize walls or public monuments, your city becomes more unclean and unattractive. 
tourists may not return. Money that could be used for public betterment has to be used to clean your mess. If you forget to turn off non-essential electrical appliances, lights, computers during half hours, how much energy goes wasted? How many unnecessary expenses? The Greek police, the universal example of proper public organization, were based on the harmony between the state and the individuals composing it, similar to the harmony that exists in nature between the whole and its parts. The city laws perfectly coincided with the natural order of the universe. Each man was organically integrated into his community and each citizen was fulfilled by participating in community life and building the common good. Today, a society that acts like ours, that is, stealing resources for personal gain, is perhaps unconsciously giving up hope on achieving that kind of society. We cannot give up that hope. However, we should not search for some sort of hero to fix the problems, but instead, we should hope that enough of us will have the outrage to see things as they are and, more importantly, have the courage to implement change. The way we can combat waste and corruption is to productively channel our outrage and courage, coming directly from hope and respect of rules and laws. Let's stop stealing our money. Let's work toward restarting the virtuous society so dear to the ancient Greeks so that we may enjoy the pleasure and the pride of being citizens of a capable and efficient state and creating a state that is worthy of its citizens' trusts.